the word slavery is not in the Bible. What? Say what? Yeah. The word slavery is not in the Bible. I just let that sink in for a moment right there. Because a lot of people will say that it's because of the Bible that they enslave black and brown people. And some say that even the Bible, the Bible, it justifies right, slavery or the enslavement of black people. They say that the Bible is because of the Bible that slavery happened. They blame it. They blame it on the book. But what's the old saying that if you want to hide something from some of the people, some of the time, you put it in the book, right? So let's look in the book. In the book known as the Bible and the version, this is the key, the version of the Bible. Here we're zooming on the King James version of the Bible. In the King James version of the Bible, all this talk about slavery in the Americas and the Caribbean of the black and the brown, the beta Israel people, once lost, now found. And blaming the Bible, saying that it's because of the Bible, because the Bible, it, it, it justifies slavery. The Bible, it gives, it, it, what do they say, it justifies? They say it's because of the Bible. We can't even make that argument because there's really no argument. But what's the old saying that if you want to, um, you know, hide something from people? Have you taken a look into the Bible, especially the versions of the Bible? Right. The version of the Bible, 1611 King James Version, this is past 400 years. This is what, 2022 going to 2023. So it's well past, right, it's well past 400 years. It's at least, you know, of the King James Version of the Bible. Or we could look in some of the other Bibles. Somebody said the Geneva Bible or Tyndale's Bible. Right. Well, go and look and see if you find the word slavery to say what they did to the black and the brown people. They justify Right, the once lost the Beta Israel people here in the Americas and the Caribbean, right? Caribbean, Caribbean, the trans Ethiopian ocean slave trade here in the Americas. They say that this was done, the enslaving of black people. We've heard the excuse or the blame game. They say it's because of the Bible. And they say that the Bible, it justifies slavery it, it tells people to go and slave it's telling the israelites or it's telling the white anglo-saxon protestant mm. they say the greatest uh trick of the devil is 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 is, is to make people believe that he don't exist <laughs> i say to you the greatest trick you know when this talk about in the scripts it says that the satan has deceived the whole world well the whole world is deceived believing that's because of the bible that we had slavery they blame the Bible and slavery when the intent so-called to enslave or enslave, getting to the real roots of the word Slav, Slavic people. Go check out that hidden history right there. That their intention, right, that evil incl inclination to do evil to black and brown people because they were black and brown peoples, right, and to use the Bible as an excuse just goes back to the whole thing about reading comprehension. The word slavery is not in the Bible. Let's first of all get this out the way, right, right here. Okay, so is this how the word slavery is spelled? Let's look it up. There's no verses found, right? And even when we find verse for two verses for slave even exists. In the whole Bible, there's only two verses. And both verses are mistranslations. In the King James Version of the Bible, so for all you... KJV, King James Version, only people, you know, and, and it's the word of God, the errant word of God, and there's no mistakes in it. Well, you're mistaken, right? Because there's only two verses in the entire Bible where we even have the term slave. And if you go into these verses, as we have gone into the verse, one is in the Hebrew Old Testament, so to speak, and the others in the Brit Chadasha or the New Testament, and coming from the Koine of Greek, even this particular word right here is soma. Soma right here, it means the body, body, right? The bodies. So if we read this verse here, it says, this is about Babylon, the merchandise of Babylon, right? The mercantile system, the times of the Gentiles and horses and chariots. It says, and slaves, but more correctly, and bodies and souls of men are also what do you call it, uh, commodified, you know, become a, a, a commerce, you know, a part of commerce, 
right? Commerce is chapter 18 of Revelation. But then here in Jeremiah, the only other place of the two places throughout the entire King James Version of the Bible. So what version of the Bible were the so-called enslavers, right, of black people? What version was they reading? Can we go to that version and can we find the word slave? Can we find the word slavery? See, people try to play this word game. They try to play a word game on y'all. I was listening to some um, comedic scholars, things on a side the platform, and they was talking about slavery in Egypt. And they were arguing off of like the ancient Egyptian terminologies used for, for, for captive and, and a captive of war or living captive, sekir ach, and all these other terminologies. I said, wow, look at them. My Hebrew and my Israelite, right, and black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. My Yehudi brothers and sisters, you got to get up on this right here. We be falling into that trap all the time. Oh, we were enslaved in Egypt. The Bible says we were enslaved in Egypt. Should we look up the word enslaved? Let's look up the word enslaved. People might say, well, maybe it's under enslaved. Since we looked up slavery, slavery is not even there in the Bible. So where did they get it from? <laughs> they couldn't have got it from the Bible. Even their own translation of the Bible, they didn't get it from that. Look, enslaved. Enslaved is not found no time. We already went through slave, right? Slave, the two places that we even find slave are in error. The two places in the King James Version. You see when it says slave in Jeremiah 2.14, slave is italicized. There's no strong concordance word right there for that. You can see the italicized words in the King James versions were supplied by the translators to give the foreign readers, like the English readers, a kind of a sense, you know, of what they interpret the Hebrew to be. But the word slave is not even there. It says, is Israel a servant? See, the word it uses in the scriptures like servant or might use the word like bond servant, right? But not the word slave. So you have to get past this whole slave thing. You've been enslaved to the word slave. Right? And coming from a Hebrew perspective or an Israelite perspective, we have to get out of this Gentile mindedness, right? That when we speak about what occurred according to the scriptural now, even in the King James Version, we don't find the word slavery. We don't find that the that the Hebrews or the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. What does it say? What does it say in the King James? It says bondmen, bondmen. And did you know the very same word bondmen in the Hebrew is the same word for servant, right? Even of Yahweh, of Hak Adosh Baruchu, of the Holy One. Blessed be He. Blessed be the name of the of the of the Elohim of Yisrael, of Yahweh. It's the same word. The same word aboda. The same terminology that's used and then it reminded me of the reasoning among some of the you know the scholars you know on the side the platform going into the comedic the linguistics the language the different words that i use and whether there is a, such a thing as slavery we would even say for the record that there wasn't slavery in ancient egypt there wasn't slavery in the bible right why because we didn't use that terminology the word terminology slave Right, has been superimposed over the truth. They've covered up the truth with this slave and slavery lie, and then they connect the dots by saying, well, it's because of the Bible, right? And the version of the Bible, which is the King James Version of the Bible, the 400-year plus version, we could go to some of the other translations. Now, let's do that. Have you done that? Have you looked at the King James Version and the versions of the Bible that led up to the King James Version, the time those versions were published, Right, gotta get into the time they will publish because if we say, well, 1619, right? So let's go to the 1600s, right? Roughly to what the 1800s, some say the active period of the enslavement, so forth and so on, bringing, you know, the ancestors over here, right? To this uh, land and ships and all of that. Well, that's there in the Bible about the ships, you know what I mean? The spiritual type of Sodom and Egypt, you know, that's there in the scripts, but nothing about slave. Nothing about slavery. And when we look at what the practice was, right, of so-called servitude or, you know, indentured servant, right, or even bond servant. Bond servant, that's like a sekir ach, ankh, right? Sekir ankh, what do you say in ancient Egypt? It means, what do you say? 
living. They, they even wrestled her, Reggie. He wrestled over it, but it was a good wrestling. He said, oh, it means it means a living captive, not a dead captive. I mean, what, so think about it for a moment. Pause for a moment. Somebody play the play the laugh track for a moment. He says a living captive. No, it meant captive for life. It really means captive for life. If you understand these ancient linguistics, you'll recognize that this is why the gift of the Holy Spirit was the gift of tongues, of language. Even in ancient Smaitawi, Mitzrayim, that they call Egypt, even in ancient Egypt, there was the opening of the mouth, right? But the first thing is the opening of the comprehension, right, to how this word slavery, right, slave and slavery, Right is not in the Bible and none of those areas and none of those verses. It was in none of the versions that was used by those who participated. Right, so you went the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and if you know if there's a white Anglo, there must have been a black Anglo. But that's another topic, another subject matter. But amongst the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, right. There was no word slave or slavery. This is, that's why I said slavery is, or what they say, a peculiar. You heard about that? They used the word slavery was a peculiar institution. See, the white man know how he uses his words. <laughs> the white man know how he uses his words. He put the whole world under a spell. He says slavery, slave, slavery. Well, that was in the Bible. Everybody is slave. Everybody had slavery. And he covers up the real words used both in ancient, you could say, Kemet, ancient Smaitawi, Mitzrayim, and also in the Hebrew Bible. And, and added to that in the King James Version. We already showed you how many times you want to go over this. You want to look up slavery again? Should we look up slavery again in the King James Version of the Bible? That's the version of the Bible by large, over 400 years. Protestant. Remember, it was the Protestant, the pilgrims. They were Protestant. Right? Can you show one version of the Bible from that time where they had the term slave right? or slavery? Right? That's why the white man calls slave and slavery, he calls it a peculiar institution right? because <laughs> you've been institutionalized. It reminds me of Revelation where it says that Satan has deceived the whole world. The adversarial mind, ha Satan, Sat Nael has deceived the entire world. Right? Even, even if it was possible, even the very elect, even many of us as, as Israelites and as Hebrews, and we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, you know, we fall in that trap. Oh yes, you know, the Egyptians enslaved us, enslaved us. Right? You know, and we can even build a little bit more on that point, but we want us to just stick on this point for a moment. Right? Stick on this point for a moment. There is no slavery in the Bible. And to add to that, and no slavery in ancient Egypt. <laughs> no slavery in the Bible and no slavery in ancient Egypt. Why? Why we say that? Why you say that, Yadin? Well, Yadin, I say that because the word, first of all, is that it's the English word, right? And it's English word is a cover story. It's a, it's, it's a distraction, right? It takes us away from the truth. Because if you look in the Bible, it says servant, servant, servant. Even all these fake memes out there from atheists or liberals or whoever, be putting up these memes. Oh, the Bible justifies slavery. The Bible is the reason why slavery, the white man was using the Bible, almost like the white man you know, wouldn't have done what he did if it wasn't, if he didn't read about it in the Bible. <laughs> you know, there was even the slave Bible. <laughs> there was a slave, ain't that something? There was a slave Bible. The white man didn't even want to give black people the Bible Bible. He, he had to cut out verses. He had, to, he had to change up stuff. Why is that? Right? Because he knew about the peculiar institution he was building. Right? And this peculiar institution now, it has spread beyond just the, the enslavement right? or the bondage, the captivity of the once lost, now found, the Beta Israel over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Now they talk about old, old sex slaves and everything, and this slaves. But the, the term slavery comes from Slavic. Basically, they took a word from their own history, their own experience, and they super and imposed it. Right, on other peoples, creating his unique 
what they call a cattle chattel slavery institution where he disregarded the humanity of black and brown and beta Israel people while using a translation of the Bible to justify his wicked, his ratchet acts. But here's the trick. In the very Bible, that's why he didn't want black people to read the Bible. He thought the first thing that the black people would discover is like, wait, hold, hold, hold up for a moment. You say you're doing this because it's written in the Bible, but if a slave, you know, could read, you know, or a, if a black man or woman or child could read, they would definitely read through the whole thing. Right? They might find those two verses that we point to, one in the old and one in the new, which basically both verses are mistranslations where they insert the word slave. So they insert the word slave two times in the King James Version of the Bible. Right? The Old Testament has no justification with, with the Hebrew. The, you know, in Jeremiah of the Old Testament, that inserts, insert, insertion of slave has no justification that word doesn't exist as italicized. In the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 18, he uses slaves when it lists and itemizes the very products, goods, and what Babylon is about, right? Selling the bodies and souls of people, right? People's bodies and souls, right? But as far as this thing called slavery, and the Bible, slavery is not even in the Bible. I don't know if people are going to be able to see through the, the trick. The, the, this trick is a deep trick right here. Most people, because they think they're smart, they, they've been talking about slavery and the Bible so long. And when he recognized, well, you know, Yadin, he's right about that. The word slavery is not in the King James Version of the Bible. And it's not in any of the Bibles that any of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants who came over here to create this chattel slavery, slavery institution but still they're not going to be able to receive it. You know, it's like the three stages. They call it the three stages. They've gone up to five and some go up to seven, but the stages of grief, they're going to ridicule it. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're going to get angry, maybe even violent, you know, verbally or otherwise speaking, because this goes deep. Because a lot of smart people have bought into the lie of slavery and the Bible. A lot of very smart people. Even ourselves, you know, we was talking about, yeah, it's slavery, slavery, this. And then we start to notice that the word is not even there in the Bible. And when we do find the word slave in the Bible, both, ver both verses are based on mistranslations. Mm. I said, wait, wait, ho ho hold up, bro. what's going on here? Then I see what these memes, I was going to collect a few of them to share right here, but I don't have them right here to share right here. But you can see them for yourself. You know what I mean? You can see these ones for yourself. We're going to go through even the etymology of, of slavery. You know, if ones really need to get the etymology, you see Slovenu or Sloveninu, you know, Sklavos, Sklavos, you know, Esclave, 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 and then you go over here, Esclave, Esclave, and look when the, the word comes into vogue. It's late 13th century. A person who is the chattel right or property of another slave now here's the thing if they had that word in the 13th century right and the king james version of the bible at 16 that was the 17th century they'll call that the 17th century right they could have used that well they did use it twice right but notice this right here let's go into how words change meanings so basically they took a title uh, a name of their people the white people took a name of their ancient white people and what had allegedly happened to them, the Slavs, and they superimpose this term on black and brown people. All right? Look at the, look at this word right here, slave, right? Sklavis, esclave, sklav, connotation. That's the con game. One bound in servitude to a person household as an instrument of labor. Now they use the term slave, but they also have in the English servant, right? It's like a word employee. Right? Or bond servant. Now, bond servant is like a captive, a captive servant. For all you comedics, that's like the word seker ankh. Right? Some say a living captive, or more correctly, a captive for life. Right? One who is submissive or subject to a specified person or influence. Right? Remember, this is the times of the Gentiles, white Anglo-Saxon. This is where you get the real inferiority. Here's where the inferiority why pretends to be white supremacy the denotation a slav in the ninth century 
Now notice, we just saw the way the word comes into vogue in the Western English language around the 13th century. So here, going a couple centuries early in the 9th century, that's like the 800s, right? The Slavs, let's zoom in on this right here so you can see this clear. The Slavs inhabited inhabitants of Eastern Europe. Uh-oh, inhabitants of what Eastern Europe? The Slavs, you know, Slavic, they have like Yugoslavia, Slavonia, these names, right? They were said to be an easy conquest. Now it's white people we're talking about, right? I would say even more right is Canaanites we're talking about because the Canaanite curse has come on black folks, right? The so-called Canaanite curse. Right. <laughs> I know there's another level to even address ones on that, because see, if you didn't get the, the whole slave trick. Right. And I heard these comedics that they were doing all sort of linguistic, interpretive gymnastic. It was like a Cirque du Soleil, you know, on Sarnetta's platform with Reggie. And I think the next one, his name was, uh, I think it was, was on Sankofa, Shaka, you know, and a few ones were, you know, even JJ 7000 was getting in on it. Right. But it was the point I heard when I heard Reggie and others say, wait, it's Seka Ankh, right, is not a Seka, a captive Ankh living, it's as a living captive, but ones don't understand the spirit. They know the letter of the hieroglyphs, but the spirit of it is a captive for life. Because a dead captive don't make no sense. You don't captive capture some dead. You throw away the dead or you bury the dead. You know, you, what would you do with a dead captive? Dead cap? What, what, what the hell are you talking about? When they go on the battlefield and they slay many of the enemies and then they capture the rest, they don't talk about dead captives. That's ridiculous. You know, but they're slick. He's slick. You know, he is a, you know, what's he called? Doctor. That, that's what a doctor, he doctored that up, right? The Slavs, inhabitants of Eastern Europe, were said to be an easy conquest because they did not fight aggressively. So did the white man take this term? And then apply from white people, right? You could say the Canaanites, right? To to black people, Israel, putting them under the Canaanite curse. From the fifth, ninth centuries, not, not the fifth to the ninth centuries, Slavs were conquered by the Celts or Celts, but more correctly, the Celts, the Greeks, the Romans, the Turks, and Moors and forced to labor as part of their subjugation. Interesting. They were what? They were captives, right? They were captives. And were they captives like indentured servants for like a couple of years or something like that, several years? No, it was for life. What about black and brown people in the Americas and the Caribbean, Caribbean, the Ethiopian Ocean? the Ethiopian Ocean Middle Passage. How about them? Were they you know, indentured servants? No, they were Slavs. Or in the English, this is where the semantic shift occurs. Expanded, the definition expanded from a particular ethnic group, right? Notice something. It shifted from a particular, there was a whole ethnic group. Black people are not Slavs, but black people were enslaved. So now they believe they were slaves. Right. And then they believe another lie. Once they believe the first lie, then they can tell them, well, well the reason why is because of the Bible. So now the black folks, a lot of pro comedics they hate on the Bible because slavery in the Bible, slavery. And they're doing all this research and they came and see the trick that was done on the word slavery. Came and see the, what, what the trick. Well, well, hopefully they'll see it. Right. The particular ethnic group is shifted from a particular ethnic group to any person who was subjugated or forced into servitude. But what language does the Bible use? It uses the language like servant, right? Bond servant, whether it says bond maid or bond man, you know what I mean? But it uses the term like servant, right? And then even when it speaks about that, the Hebrews and the sons of Jacob, right? And the family and the co-religionists, the, the, we want the Hebrews in that sense, because we look at Hebrews to the spirituality, stay tuned for, for the breakdown and the build on that, right? Because there's some course corrections that got to go on. We got to, first of all, throw out this word slavery and recognize it for the lie that it was, right? And all the other lies connected with it, right? The lies that make intelligent people read the Bible stupidly, 
<laughs> yeah, we we said it stupidly, you know, in a stupid or stupid fashion. A tipesh, tipesh, you know, in a foolish fashion. Like they don't even recognize that when they're reading it, they sing the word servant. And then for the my fellow Hebrews and, and, and Israelites, you know, we have to say that what the Bible says. If we're going by the King James KJV, then they will bond men. Right? Like the seker, remember the word seker ankh? Right? That seker ankh. I'm getting into that from the ancient committee and the ancient metunet, uh, you know, the linguistics. Because language is the key. Language is the key. Because we're showing you how language or the misunderstanding of language can enslave you. It can enslave your, your soul and your spirit. Right? So you're looking at the Bible and saying, it's because of the Bible. No, it's because of evil men and people. Right? Evil minded men and people. Right? We could say they were fulfilling a biblical uh, prophecy, but they were just evil people, just cutting to the chase. They were evil people. And we see what was going on. These were European, Eastern European people. We say on the record, Indo, Indo-European people or Canaanites, according to the scripture type and according to the archaeology, to put it right. Because they confuse you in the whole Canaanite thing. Right? You're under the Canaanite curse. Right? That Canaanite curse, you think you're to be a slave of, of slaves or a servant of servants. Right? Which one is it? Servant of servant? A servant is different than a slave. That's the next point to really break down. People don't reckon if it was the same thing, then they would have either translated it in the King James Bible instead of saying servant, 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 bond, servant, bond, maid, bond, man. They would have said it simply as slave, 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 slave. But they didn't do that. But they told you that it's based on this, that they do that. But if we really study this, the scripture, we recognize they wasn't following, you know, the law of Moses. They wasn't following the Torah. You know, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant wasn't, he was just out to, for his own benefit, for his own good. Is there any hope for the hopeless sinner who would hurt all humanity, right, just to make a profit for his own? You know what I mean? So why did Europeans enslave Africans? I know we're speaking modern times and talking slave, and, but then we have to recognize the trick, right? Even the word slave has to be re, you know, has to be re, you know, rebooted in a sense. When I say rebooted, it has to be put into its proper context, right? This whole slave and slavery word has to be put into its, its, its proper context. So this is why we say simply right here, we had a little bit more to go into, but, you know, it's not really necessary since the word, we can get to, you just want to say, we, we have to kind of, I want to say even abolish the word. We got to know what the so-called S word really means, right? We got to understand what the word really means and where is it really? Which S word are we talking about? Servant, right? Servants or slaves, right? We're talking about servants or slaves, right? If to put in the scriptural terms, the Hebrews were bondmen, right? They were bondmen, right? To paro. But the same Hebrew word for bondmen, right? The, the root of the word for bondmen, and even serving the Abad, the Abada, right? The Abada, Abad, Ein Beit Dalet, Abad. Some in modern Hebrew they say Ebed. So really it's Ebed, 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 Ebed. What it says indentured servants, Ebed, Ebed, right? Over here we have the same word. You see the V, that's the modern, you know, European, Eastern European. Uh oh, Eastern Europeans, or some of the Eastern European Jews, some of the Slav people, you see the flip mode. You see the possible flip mode that was going on? Deuteronomy 34 and 5, we have Ebed, Ebed, or Eved, Ebed, right? This was for another reasoning right there. Here we have Ebed Yahuwah, Ebed. Here is a servant of the Lord. How come they don't, instead of saying servant of the Lord, say the slave of the Lord? The slave of the Lord. See, it's a very clever word because as we pointed out, both of these words, right? Both of these words are S words, right? Here we have Abdi, 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 right? Abada, Abada or Avada, bond servants, right? Bond servants. Just looking at some of the words right there. Okay, this is going into 
another level of reasoning right here, you know, but some of the main words. That's what I like to pick up on as we move forward. But once again, let's just state it once again that the word slave, right? The word slave and slavery, let's start out with slavery. Slavery is not in the Bible. Slavery is not in the Bible. Slavery, not in the Bible, right? You know, and no slavery, right, in ancient Egypt. This is where we want to go with this right here, right? Because we now are looking at the linguistics and, and the use of words and how words have been used to trick and also words have been used to cover up, right? So we look at the period of time that the enslavement of the Beta Israel was going on roughly from the 1600s, right, to, to if we look at the 400-year period, but we look at the main period of the bringing over of ones and the capture of ones and the selling and the buying, so to speak, of ones, you know, over here into this Western Hemisphere, we have roughly from the 1600s to like the 1800s, the epicenter for the Beta Israel, for the black people, for the Beta Israel in Americas and the Caribbean, right? And then we look at, well, what version of the Bible were they reading? Right, we gotta look at the literature because he's saying that they try to justify their actions, right, their wickedness, their brutality against black and brown people. That actually, if you look at it, right, that was in violation of the very Bible that they were using. But notice they didn't use the word servant or bond servant, right? Because he bond servant using any of the terms that were used before. They inserted this word into the English language and into the world consciousness. They put this word slavery, slavery, right, into the world consciousness. And as they say, it's a very peculiar, right, institution, a very peculiar, right, institution, right? So this is the word game, right? This is the spirits, the words, right, tricking ones with words, why is this prison of war? Many of us will say we were prisoners of war. We were not no slave because we know something inside us is telling us there's something wrong. Why right? there's something wrong, but once and once not just able to put their finger on it. So we put the finger on it for you, that divine finger, the finger of Hila him on it. Why right? that there is no slavery, right? No slavery in the Bible, right? And also no slavery in ancient Egypt. Now, were they captives? Were they bond captives? Do they sometimes treat their servants good? Sometimes they treat their servants bad? That's a whole other point right there. But they didn't have this consciousness, right, of this word slavery, this inhumanity, right, to other human beings. We see it throughout the scripture. Even though ones might say, well, still that's bondage, still somebody is working for somebody that is a slave or bondman for life. Well, there's the term sekar ankh in ancient Egypt as well, right? Where some means, say it means living captive, but more correctly, a captive life. They're going to have a life of being a captive, right? They're going to be a captive for life. We have the same thing in the scripts, the same thing in the Hebrew scriptures, right? This is why we say, right? This is why we say right here, slave and slavery no more, right? Now, historically speaking, yes, it's on the record. And this is the good thing that this word is on the record. You know why it's a good thing this word is on the record? Because then we can see in what time, right? And also discern in what state of mind were they using these terminologies, right? There is no slavery, right, in the Bible, right? The simple proof, go look it up for yourself, right? And the term slave is only used in two places, and these two places, go research it for yourself, these two places are mistranslations. Everywhere else in the Bible, they use terminologies that these so-called white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, these, these good Christians come, pretending to be, they pretended to be the Israelites, they were coming to America, and that was like the new Canaan and all of that. And you know, they were so-called putting into effect, you know, the Bible as they so-called read it. Well, they must have misread it because the term slave is not there. And the Hebrews, right, the sons of Jacob, the B'nai Yaakov, they were not slaves in Egypt, right? We, the black Jews, were not slaves in Egypt. Let's say that once again. 
We, the black Jews, were not slaves. And he, the Bible tells you that. Even the translation that we are pointing to, the King James Version and the other versions, it says they were bond men. Right? The captives, you can say captives, they were captives in bond. They had to do heavy labor. You know, they were in a situation, forced labor, covert, um, 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 corvée, corvée. It was a corvée. What sort of bondage what sort of servitude was it harsh that's what the scripture says harsh bondage it's because of the harsh bondage you know what i mean the harsh bondage this is what the scripture is speaking about you know and you hear some people say the jews were slaves in egypt that's also a misreading of it it was not the jews it was the hebrews right and it was the sons of jacob known as the israelites and coming out of mitzrayim coming out of smaitawi or what they call egypt this was the birth of the hebrew the israelite nation right so we have all f forms of you know slavery today right but let that not be confused with what the bible has so it's the S word. Which S word do you choose? Right? The true word that's used there, servants. What kind of servant? Right? Servant, bond servant. Right? What kind of bondage? Right? Or bond servitude. Right? Harsh bondage. That's the word that the Bible, that's the word that the scripture uses right there. Harsh bondage. Let's just show this right here, here, here. Let's go to this one right here before we close out with this, just so that ones can see this for themselves. So we have the word, right, bond, right? Let's go to the word bondage, right? Let's go to the word bondage. It says, you see what it says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 14, and they made their lives, speaking of the Hebrews, the sons of Jacob, bitter with harsh bondage. The word bondage is aboda, 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 or some modern Jews will say avoda, avoda, in modern Hebrew, avoda. It's labor, it's service. They always like to insert the word slave. Notice that they always like to insert the word slave to make a kind of parody, right? But it's bondage, it's captive, you're captive, you're under bond, you know what I mean? You're, you're under bond, you're not like a, a servant, right? Even some servants... You know, if they're servants, they could, in a sense, quit. It's like you're an employee, you could quit. But like somebody who's like forced to serve like in prison or something like that, you know, they can't really quit like that. You, you see the context, right? So it's labor, but it's also ministering and office. As we get, as we follow this word through right here, right? The aboda, remember the aboda, right? The aboda is from the abad, abad, right? Ebed, it's a work. It's a, it's a general term. It's the context. It's not just the letter, right, of the word, but it's the context. That's why it says right here, hard, kasha, 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 right, hard, cruel, right, hard, cruel. So it's hard, cruel work, right, hard, cruel service, right, all manners of service. It didn't say all manners of slavery. They could have inserted that, all their service. They could have said all their slavery. Right. And you will not find Jews one time in Exodus. That's another point that many of, you know, the European Jews like to say. And some of us pick up on those things like we don't have any comprehension. Right. And not studying to see, wait, that's not proper. That's not right and accurate. That's not right and accurate. It's not that the Jews were not slaves in Egypt. Even we, the black Jews, were not slaves in Egypt. No, we, Beta Israel, or rather, according to the scripts, the Hebrews, right, the sons of Jacob, right, we were in hard bondage, right? That's the whole point, right? We look at the whole point of the Exodus, which is kind of loss, right? So you see where he uses the word bondage, bondage. Right? Bondage. Now, this same word is also used for religious service. This is the interesting thing about it. This same word here is also used for religious service so that when we have service, when we worship, we have a feast and we go through invocation and word, sound, power. All of that, too, is the aboda, right? The aboda or the avoda, 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 aboda is the aboda, is the service. Right? Is the service. Right? And even the scripture is, is clear when it says, He took us out of service, 
especially out of the Asha, the service to Paro, to the great house of Sutanet, the Sutan Bat, so we would be his servants. So there's that religious aspect that's often overlooked because, first of all, they're not looking at the right word. Slavery will give you a misunderstanding of what occurred in the Hebrew Bible. Right? What it says is that there will be something like to that, but so much worse, you know what I mean? So many more times worse would happen to us, right, in these latter days. And yes, it's a point of reference, but the word used is hard and cruel bondage, right? The house is also referred to as the house of bondage, the bite of bondage, which has a twofold sense. Right, you know, in all manner of service, right, all manner of service, even speaking about religious service. In fact, the whole Exodus thing actually kicks off with them wanting to get get like a, a holiday, like a like, like a vacation, a holy day. That's how it began. Even began not so much for them just wanting just to come out of Egypt at that time. They just wanted to get a holiday, a break from the hard labor and the hard service, from being that, that, that captive, you know, being like a captive. The, the sons of Jacob were like captives, you know, for life, were like Seker Ankh, right? Seker Ankh, right? And not just captive, like you, you don't captive somebody in war, but there's also spiritual war. Either you worship my way or like death. This is what, you know, we know in the reality of things. So here, just bringing this out and bringing this to fulfillment. Let's not get confused, you know, confused by the slave rhetoric and the slave narrative, you know, because a slave narrative is a latter day narrative. It's a, it's a, it's a great exaggeration and an abomination to anything to anything that ever existed before. That's why it says that the last beast, you know, if you look at the scripture like that, the last beast is diverse. The last system, the beast system, is diverse from all other systems. So yeah, we can say, yeah, it's like, say, ancient Egypt, but we have to know exactly what it be like. Otherwise, because of the wrong word, remember? In the beginning was the word. So let's begin, you know, by checking this slavery word and this slavery rhetoric. There is no slavery in the Bible, in the KJV, right? In the King James Version Bible, in the 400-year Bible. And there is no slavery, right? Or was no slavery in ancient Egypt. Because this word slavery is a particular white Anglo-Saxon Protestant institution, especially in these end times, what they call like the that when it's the end time, the end of their rulership. This is what we mean by the end of their rulership. That's why it's being challenged, right? Like a thousand, you know, daggers, you know, like a thousand cuts. And may this also be a good cut as well. Shalom Chabarim. Shalom. This is this is your Ach, right? This is your fellow Talmud right here. This is Yadin. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari. L O J. The line of Judah society is Madison, Rastafari Jews, Rastafari Israelites. Once again, no slavery in the Bible. I think that's that should be plainly proven. Right? Now we have to figure out, you know, how to reverse, you know, how do this is how we begin to reverse right, the Canaanite curse. Again, this is how we begin to reverse. Reversing the Canaanite curse. When I hear love, holy Jesus, yes I, Rastafari, priest, my Lord, my brother. Yeah, man, you know, we have to reverse this Canaanite curse. It begins with, with this word slavery and getting to the real roots of slavery. The roots of slavery has to do with our captive, has to do with the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant doesn't have to do with we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. Shalom Chabarim. Shalom. Yeshua Shalom.